Hi everyone, it's Lindenherz. I thought of joining the first, last and always hashtag that was initiated by um, Christine and Celeste's channel. Um, and um, yeah, uh, I think I just dive in and hopefully I will make a quick video. I know this is an endless joke, but um, let's start. So my first deck was actually this one here. This tiny little <laughs> uh, Smith Wade or Rider Wade Smith deck. And I was quite disappointed because it came with a ginormous book, a book by Henjo Bensef, um, and with these tiny, tiny, super tiny cards. And they're not super tiny. I now I have a much tinier deck, <laughs> but um, this was a bit of a disappointment. I wasn't so fond of it, um, and I mainly used it for study purposes. This is the backing. So I'm not sure if this is a traditional backing. I know uh, there is also this kind of square, I don't know how to call it, kariert of, uh, in, in, in German. This um, one of the backings uh, at least is uh, really not to my taste. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, this is okay. It's not the best one, but it's okay. But actually I have never used this deck, actually, only for study purposes. Um, so back then I thought I want a real, I want a bigger deck and I wasn't sure about, um, the art because, um, yeah, it was not necessarily my cup of tea cause, um, mainly because of the coloration. I know this coloration is okay. Um, there are really other versions of it, which to my taste are really, I can't take, I can't take them. They are so, ugh. Yeah, but um, back then I thought I want to have another one, and I really go uh, was yeah I, I was going with my with my gut feeling and uh, with my uh, yeah I, I guess it was really all about the art style. It was not necessarily a clone or not necessarily um, Smith Wade based, although a lot of uh, the uh, cards are recognizable, but some are a bit different. Uh, but um, I still, I wanted it and I was happy to get it. And uh, it's the Joie de Vivre tarot. And I'm still happy to have it in my collection. Such a fun deck. Uh, it goes deep still, although it looks like a fun and at first sight superficial deck with all these funny creatures. But um, it's... Um, it's 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 a good deck and you can have really great conversations with it. I don't know. I guess this is something uh, we all do as tarot readers from time to time, having conversations. I don't mean necessarily these interview spreads, but um, just drawing a card um, with a basic question in mind. What do I need to know today? And then uh, oh, which card wants to come forth? And then starting uh, from there on starting uh, asking questions uh, or asking the cards that the initial card that uh, I drew questions and really long spreads or conversations, so to speak, can come out of that. And I really adore this. And um, I'm happy about that, um, that this one is really fun and sometimes really tongue in cheek and um, um I really love it. And um, I have to say, um, I know initially it's, yeah, mostly you say this to beginners to have one deck and only study this deck. But to be honest, um, I learned with different decks at once. Um, although I have to say um, this one was long, uh, the one that I have had the longest before I got the, the next ones. And all of the following tarot decks weren't, um, yeah, clones at all or Smith Wade based at all. So I had the Tarot of the Hidden Realm, I had the Raven's Prophecy Tarot, I had the um, um, Green Witch Tarot, um, which is a bit like Smith Wade to some degree, not always, uh, but you can see parallels. But um, yeah, I had this deck and then a lot of background literature that I was studying and um and of course I came I always came back to this deck to the initial card mm, 
depictions or um, yeah, the depictions of of uh, yeah the Smith Wade deck. So this is something I still do when I have a new deck which is not so uh, strongly based on Smith Wade that I always recall the original card in mind so to see uh, differences um, and um, make sense to them and so uh, so to speak. Yeah, but this deck is fun. Uh, it's it's a bit uh, strange sometimes with all the creatures, but the little white book that comes with it is really one of the best I've ever had. Uh, and it was great that I started with uh, such a book because it was, is, or still is, such a playful book. Every character here uh, in this deck has a name and this name is fitting in relation to the card and so much fun. So much joy with this deck. So Joie de Vivre, very fitting name. <laughs> so the last deck. Yeah, um, I started or I recently uh, did a lot of trades and this was one of the latest tarot decks I got in a trade. And um, yeah, it is the Llewellyn Tarot. So the Llewellyn Tarot was really um, long on my list. It was, um, um, at first I thought um, of getting this um, because it was in the early stages of my learning, it, because it was so, so uh, close to the uh, smith Wade system uh, depictions, of course. Um, and um, I thought back and forth, do, do I want this or do I want the Terror of Muha? And then I got the Terror of Muha. And to be honest, although I adore the art style, I wasn't able to connect with the cards. Um, I tried and I tried and for some reason uh, it never clicked. And so I moved the deck on <laughs> and um, got for, uh, for this I got the um, uh, Smith Wade Centennial uh, edition and was really stunned with uh, how much I adore the Smith Wade deck. Now especially in this coloration. But I got this recently in a trade and I'm really happy with this deck. And I'm still not sure if I want to trim it, although I have seen uh, various um, versions of this deck uh, trimmed. But um, at the moment, I quite like it. And I like the colors, this watercolor based thing. What I don't like so much is that you, I hope you can see it, the sun is really uh, going down fast. <laughs> um, what you can see is um, that there is much more depth uh, to the majors than to the minors. And this is something um, I have seen with other decks before, not necessarily those I, I'm owning, but um, there are sometimes decks where you can see that there are were less, I don't want to say paying attention to details, but maybe there are some that look rushed. These not don't necessarily look rushed, but they, they look like um, sketches that where you can work more on, where you can add layers and layers on. And these majors, definitely have have, uh, have those layers. So um, it's a bit sad because of that, but uh, still it's a wonderful deck and I enjoy working with it and uh, it reads beautifully. I love the colors. It's sometimes these greens are so wow. So I really adore it. So happy to have this now in my collection and this definitely was clicking. <laughs> so, um, and um, yeah, my always deck. And really sorry for the fading light. I hope I can catch it now. <laughs> it's no, sometimes something like the blue hour a little bit. So my always deck. I have to cheat a bit because uh, there is some, there's another deck that can move into that category at the moment, but I'm still learning it, but I'm still working with it and going uh, deep within this deck with the structure and so on. But the one that uh, is really at the moment my always deck, um, and I know you will all be tired of me hearing this, but it's the Guy in Tarot. Of course, you might have guessed it. This is um, the uh, the uh, Schiffer edition I um, was trimming, and um, 
I'm really happy with it now. Uh, I wasn't uh, looking at it at first because I really was so annoyed because of the double borders. And a lot of you were or are still annoyed because of that. Um, but after trimming it, it was so much better. And I decided on uh, cutting the um, corners like that, mostly because I wasn't, um, yeah, I wasn't able to find my uh, rounder, uh, my, my, my rounder cutter, cutter rounder, however you want to call it. Um, and um, I thought, okay, I will trim it like this. And I'm really happy that I did that. It really looks good. Uh, I'm quite happy with the, with the cards now. Uh, some of the cards are still a bit more saturated than the, um, for instance, the French edition that I have, which I now have learned. It's initially a Canadian edition. Or French Canadian edition, um, but um, I still love it, uh, and it's much more workable now. You can riffle shuffle it. Also, the cardstock is sturdy and will have to um, not will have to, but um, can maintain this riffle shuffle, and it's flexible enough for that. And it looks so much better now. I can't understand Schiffer. Why do they do these double borders? Who is this? Ah, this person that always had to put borders around gorgeous decks, even when decks were meant borderless. Not this one, but the Mary L was meant borderless. So I am not, I can't understand that. I know in, uh, when you work for a radio station on, uh, and work for something like that and, uh, create, um, um, yeah features or something you always get this uh, uh this uh recommendation kill your darlings and <laughs> maybe <laughs> you should also do it Schiffer. kill your borders they are useless and they are they are ugly <laughs> no no borders on on such decks and i'm happy with it now so this is my always deck but i have another one that uh, is really quickly moving up into my always category and I won't really necessarily want to have just one always deck but this one is now moving into my always category and now maybe a lot of you might think which kind of deck is that I don't know the backing which backing which which deck wow what 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 deck is that this is the revived Greenwood Tarot yeah I did a reprint of that uh, uh, with um, Printer Studio and chose um, the biggest cardstock that which was avail uh, available there, mostly because all the other cardstocks were um, too small and cropped the images too much. So here is the most you can see the most of the images here, but still the stack was a little bit of a pain because um, the things uh, when you when you upload the images, you get some kind of, uh, um, yeah, instructions how to put the images there. So uh, you get what you see there on screen, if you know what I mean. But for some reason, um, it's it isn't accurate. So when you get your cards, you sometimes have borders here. You sometimes have borders here and here, even with those cards. And here it was the same. So this deck wasn't 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 possible to to cut this deck or trim this deck with a scissor. So I was really happy that I had my um, my um, um, cutting machine. I have a cutting machine, so for book binding and some stuff like that. And it was really necessary to do that with this because otherwise I would have gone nuts because of the here borders and their borders and wow but this is a really gorgeous deck and I'm working with it really extensively at the moment in a within a challenge here on um, on Instagram and also um, um, a deck comparison series that I'm making on um, sorry this was a little fly here <laughs> Um, a deck comparison series that I was um, that I'm making on uh, Instagram, where I compare the Wildwood with the Greenwood Tarot, and it's really interesting what is coming up there, which kind of uh, similarities, where they differ, uh, how different the artists uh, were taking the 
yeah, or, or we're approaching the cards and the card motifs. And what is really awesome about that is that uh, Cesca Potter, the artist of the Greenwood, did also or uh, was writing or had written um, a handbook. Uh, in addition to um, the Greenwood, the original Greenwood guidebook that was written by Mark Ryan um, and added it to her website. But this website isn't uh, available anymore and she handed it over to another person, another, uh, I, get, I guess she is a shaman and um, she is maintaining this, uh, this guidebook um, and she is also offering the cards there as PDFs. Uh, as PDF uh, uh, data or files, PDF files. And um, um, in this, uh, on this page, it says that this is with the permission of, uh, of Cheska Potter, um, although there's still standing something about the copyright that is still within or that still is um, in the hands of Cheska Potter. So this is a little bit of a, um, gray zone. I don't know if you would say this in English. We say grauzone. So when you don't know if it's okay or if it's not okay, but it's standing there uh, that a lot of these people uh, that visited that site um, did their own personal copy of that. So I did my own personal copy of that. Really sorry about the lighting. I will finish now. <laughs> and uh, I will... I guess I will do a comparison, a quicker comparison video on uh, in, uh, YouTube uh, somewhere in the future. Uh, for now, at the moment, I'm doing this daily uh, comparison series on uh, Instagram. Wild, this, it's the hashtag Wildwood um, versus Greenwood on Instagram. And there you can find uh, what I come up with and what um, also... Uh, Cheska Potter had written in her guidebook and so on and so forth. It's a it's a great great deck, and it's really uh, speaking deeply to me. Um, I have to say, much it has left a much deeper impression on me than uh, the Wildwood. Although I adore um, Will Worthington's art, but this one, this art is going a deep on a deeper, or well, is working for me on a deeper level. The other one is more on the mundane and the surface level kind of, of thing so the upper world or the uh, uh, everyday world you could say and this is a otherworldly kind of um, quality that this deck has a very very shamanistic strong feeling these cards have and um, I'm happy to have them now so the light is fading I will see uh, yeah that I will switch on some lights and maybe I will do another video I will see how uh, I can figure out this uh lighting issue here and hopefully we'll see us soon so i wish you all the best bye bye